Hello, and welcome to this Bacon Bits video on remote control. We're going to take a look at how our remote works on Windows, Mac OS, and Ubuntu. To start off with, installing the remote is very simple. You can go to Actions here, and then instead of Repair Remote Service, we typically see Install Remote Service. And this will send an install job to the machine. We also have the ability to disable the remote, so here we can toggle it to an on-demand scenario. This will allow you to click a button to start a session, and then it'll have a timer before the service turns it back off again. And we also have always off. This will disable the service entirely until you manually toggle it to either always on or on demand. Let's go ahead and take a look at our screen on Windows. Here we can see connected to watching. This means that there are two people currently logged into this remote session, myself, and then of course myself again, another browser tab. This allows multiple people to log into the machine, so that can be very helpful for collaboration scenarios. In the bottom left, we can see some common keyboard shortcuts here. So you have like Win Key L, the Windows key, Control Delete, as well as the ability to send your clipboard or receive the clipboard from the remote machine, and the option to type text directly into the machine, bypassing the clipboard entirely. In the bottom right, if we had multiple monitors, we would see a drop down here saying Monitor 1, Monitor 2, and have the option displaying individuals or the whole set of monitors left to right. Next up, we have tools. This is a mini task manager. So we're able to go through here and either stop processes or start and restart services or even stop them. And we also have a chat feature is what you see on the screen right now, where you can open up a remote chat with that user. In the top right, we have some options for both controlling the display on your side so if you have any vertical monitors, or maybe it's showing upside down, you can fix that, as well as various scaling settings. And then we also have some options for low bandwidth scenarios. So you can change the quality of the picture being displayed back to lower the amount of data you need, as well as the frame rate too. Let's take a peek at Mac OS. It'll be very similar. So here we can see Bacon Remote on Mac OS. Again, very similar. We have Mac specific keyboard shortcuts in the bottom left. And again, a mini task manager. On Linux, more the same. Again, we're gonna see some specific keyboard shortcuts down here, along with a mini task manager. Next up, let's take a look at our shell feature, again, starting with Windows. This allows you to log into the back end of the machine and the very nice thing about our shell is that it keeps the same session you're working in. So let's say if I wanted to run PowerShell on Windows, I can. And if I have a variable I'd like to set, I can do that and then pull back the result of that variable. This means that you can also do more interactive things as we'll see as we move through the other shells. So next up, let's take a peek at Mac OS. And here in Mac OS, I can do something like, let's say software update L. And it's going to find all available software updates from a CLI standpoint on Mac OS. And lastly, let's take a look at the shell on Ubuntu. And here you can run something a little bit more interactive, something like, let's say, HTOP. So here you can see the screen a live update, again, as though you were logged directly into the machine. And so that's our shell experience. Lastly, let's take a look at what our file system view looks like. Again, we'll return back to Windows. The file system view can be used to download files as well as upload files to the machine. So here I can see I have a C drive and an F drive. So I'll navigate through C, go to temp. You can download things just simply by clicking on the file and it'll pull it into your browser downloads here as you can see. Again, we'll see the same interaction for Mac OS. If we go to our file system here, we have temp directory, everything inside there. And then same kind of thing on Linux. Here, much like Mac OS, we can go to our temp directory or maybe like a user's home directory and then upload or pull files quite simply. So that's just a quick look at the remote features in Bacon. Thanks for joining us in this Bacon Bits video and we'll see you next time.